Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live tropical update and also a discussion of our storm chasing logistics and our plan for our science mission. This is the Radar Omega uh, tropical tracking tools here. And as you saw yesterday, uh, I met up with Sasha and Critter down in Denver and they've been able to waterproof Dominator 4, add some extra reinforcements as well. And I'm about to head toward Atlanta uh, to pick up some live streaming pods and then dropping down to either one uh, of these tropical cyclones. The yellow there uh, is when they uh, are forecast to intensify into Category 1 hurricanes. These are the uh, forecast tracks, the official National Hurricane Center forecast tracks. We've got Tropical Depression 14 just to the north of Honduras. Uh, and in fact, uh, there, were some, there are some tropical storm warnings in effect in the northeastern coast of Honduras. Uh, that is a tropical depression right now. It's forecast to be Tropical Storm Marco during the next update. And then we've got uh, Tropical Storm Laura that's out further out uh, near the uh, Lesser Antilles. And uh, this is heading off to the west northwest. Maximum sustained winds of 45 miles an hour. There is a hurricane reconnaissance aircraft on the way out uh, to that storm. And we're really watching both of these storms. And this is going to be a very rare situation. The last time that there were two landfalls like this within 24 hours apart was back in 1933. And during that, there was a landfall in Texas. There was also a landfall in southern Florida. Uh, right now, uh, Tropical Storm Laura is forecast to move across the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, northern uh, 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 Hispaniola, uh, grazing the northern coast of Cuba. And this is a little bit further south uh, than the forecast track was yesterday. Now it takes it over the uh, Straits of uh, Florida Straits, curving north on the western side of a Bermuda High and possibly heading toward uh, the central Gulf Coast region, maybe northwest Florida, uh, the Alabama coastline there, so, uh, coastal Mississippi. And look at how close these two tracks uh, are in the Gulf of Mexico, with two tropical cyclones, two hurricanes actually, in the Gulf of Mexico. And once you get these storms within about 100 miles apart, they begin to interact with each other. And that's called Fujiwara effect. Uh, that's already all over the news. And it's going to be discussed nonstop. Uh, the interaction of two cyclonic vortices in this case. Uh, these are going to be hurricanes. Uh, but that's part of the reason why there's been a slight shift to the south across the Florida Straits uh, with Tropical Storm or even a Hurricane Laura uh, by this time. Initially, the cyclonic circulation around this storm is going to act to bend and deflect uh, this uh, storm a little bit further to the left. And then once this uh, ramps up into a hurricane of a roughly equivalent stre uh, strength into the Gulf of Mexico, then the southerly flow uh, to the east of that cyclone will cause uh, the one further east to wobble a bit to the north. It's also going to turn to the north around the weakness, or around the western edge of the Bermuda High. And uh, the Bermuda High extends pretty far to the west, almost to the southeastern coast. Here's this upper level low here. Uh, lifting out to the northeast, but uh, the westward expansion of that Bermuda High is what's going to cause Tropical Storm Laura to move more of a west-northwest track and then eventually move into the very warm Gulf of Mexico. And so I'm going to try to decide whether to chase both of these systems or uh, which, whichever one is going to be more intense. Uh, some of the latest models are actually taking uh, Tropical Storm or Hurricane Marco up to the central Louisiana coast a little bit earlier in the week. So potentially I could uh, intercept a Hurricane Marco and then blast off to the east and intercept a potentially even stronger Hurricane Laura in the central Gulf Coast region. It is very possible though this forecast track could wobble a little bit north of course of Florida Keys, southern Florida, uh, still in that cone of uncertainty uh, with this forecast track. Let's uh, look at a different scan here. Look at the Caribbean. And these are the uh, tropical tracking tools here on uh, the Radar Omega app. And really right now, uh, uh, the Tropical Depression 14 that's just in the north of Honduras, look at how it's battling this dry air uh, right near the center. There appears to be a little bit of a blow up of convection, probably just the beginning of this. And really what's preventing the storm from intensifying into a tropical storm right now is this dry air that's getting entrained into the middle of the circulation. But you can see that there's still plenty of convection near the center. Definitely has closed rotation and it is forecast to be a tropical storm during that next update and then make the turn to the north toward the northern Yucatan Peninsula. And it's forecast to intensify into a, a weak hurricane by the time it gets into the western Gulf of Mexico. And this one could be a mega rain producer for portions of coastal Texas and southern Louisiana. And it's forecast to slow down as it uh, moves closer to the U.S. There's not a big trough that's coming in that's going to pick up both of these systems and launch them into the North Atlantic. 
These are going to be slowing down, stalling out a little bit over the central U.S., southern U.S., bringing lots of rain as well. But first, we got to get through these landfalls, and we got to figure out how these are going to interact with each other. Uh, the steering currents are the Bermuda High, uh, that's forecast to expand to the west or the southeastern U.S. coast, and then the Fujiwara interaction of these two systems. So we really need to decide which ones to chase, and uh, my plan is to leave here shortly in Dominator 4. I'm going to show you a quick video uh, yesterday uh, of the fabrication process, waterproofing Dominator 4. We had the blown out sunroof from the hail dents, blown out back window uh, from that uh, Crane County, Texas uh, hail intercept, and in fact, uh, hail damage from two years worth of storms, and this is an accelerated video uh, sh uh, showing Sasha and Critter. Uh, who have a shop down in Denver, expert vehicle fabricators here, and uh, they're able to mount a piece of aluminum and waterproof a silicone, or a, a special kind of, it's not actually silicone, but it sticks all over the place, but this is uh, acting to waterproof the edges, prevent leakage inside the hurricane, and we also have a, a gold tornado on the back, if you're part of our secret club, you can get one of those, uh, but aluminum sealed with the silicone here, and uh, eventually for next hurricane season, uh, the plan is to make a dominator that floats. And they say that they can do it. Uh, maybe we'll use one of those old duck boats or uh, there's some other options as well. So imagine the dominator four sampling the hurricane, then approaching storm surge flooding and then shifting into a boat floating through the storm surge and then still recording data at the same time. And speaking of science, we do have a three pronged uh, science mission approach. I do have some incredible news. Uh, the subsonic sensor that uh, Mark or Chase and Spin on Twitter has developed arrived this morning through FedEx just in time. So we're gonna be able to measure the heartbeat inside this storm, possibly for the first time ever in the eye of a hurricane or a tropical cyclone. Uh, the plan uh, with the subsonic sensor is we have to mount it in calm winds and no precipitation because the pressure signals uh, from the wind flowing over the probe can drown out the subsonic, uh, uh, subsonic waves that we're trying to measure. And uh, this is basically the heartbeat of the hurricane or the heartbeat of supercell storms. And uh, a supercell with a tornado and a supercell without a tornado have very different heartbeat signatures. And our goal with these subsonic sensors is to try to measure uh, the differences between the two so we can potentially measure the presence of a tornado the presence of tornadoes in the outer bands of hurricanes or within the eye wall, maybe the uh, subsonic uh, frequency of an approaching storm surge. We could also measure, and we're going to be deploying that out of the Dominator. Uh, also, the Windy Palms project from the HERV. I'm meeting up with Mike Tice, and we're going to be filming this for our storm chasing series, Category 6 on National Geographic. Uh, they're helping to support this science, but mainly this is made possible by the Facebook supporter community. All of this science, Team Dominator, and the live storm chasing. Uh, this is the infrasound sensor developed by Mark that I'll be deploying to measure the heartbeat inside uh, these tornadoes. We also have the hail slash rainfall rate sensor that we're going to be measuring the rainfall rates in the outer bands versus the eye wall of these hurricanes as they come in. And uh, we're also going to be deploying these live streaming video pods, and I'm going to have one of these on the roof of the Dominator 4 to also give a rough estimate of wind speed and the pressure inside. Uh, so you're going to be able to see this network of uh, live streaming sensors that will be streaming data to the Radar Omega app, uh, along with those uh, uh, tropical update reporting tools. And the Windy Palms project with Mike Tice and the Hurricane Eyewall Research Vehicle. That's going to be a network of meteorological stations that are mounted up in the uh, top of palm trees, uh, because those uh, palm, palm trunks uh, the trunks of palm trees are usually left standing even during the most powerful hurricanes when they come in. So we definitely have a big science mission planned uh, for this hurricane and for the series at National Geographic there. Uh, we're all heading out there, the Herve, the Dominator 4, and we're about to leave today, heading into Atlanta uh, to get those final sensors. And here is the forecast track. This is Tropical Storm Laura. This is the latest. National Hurricane Center track that you saw on the radar Omega tracking tools, and it is forecast to be a Category 1 as it approaches the central Gulf of Mexico, but intensity forecasts, different than the forecast tracks, are usually highly uncertain, and I wouldn't be surprised if one or both of these storms are much more robust hurricanes, much stronger when they get close to the Gulf Coast. Definitely stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center forecast. Uh, stay tuned to our weather reports as well. Here's the official forecast track of the other one. You can see those alerts across uh, the northern Yucatan. 
And it is forecast to be Tropical Storm Marco coming up in the next update. So this is the upper level pattern. Uh, this shows uh, 24 hours from now uh, that Bermuda High beginning to expand off to the west. You can see the western lobe of that Bermuda High just off uh, the U.S. coastline. So the southeast coast of Florida. And that Bermuda High is a big driver in, uh, in forecast track. So if that Bermuda High is a little bit further east, then a lot of times you'll get more of the fish storms that curve to the north uh, with potential impacts near Bermuda. But when that Bermuda High expands a little bit off to the west, I'm trying to find the image here so I can draw on it for you guys. But when that Bermuda High expands a little bit west like it is now, then it sends these storms into the Gulf of Mexico in a very favorable environment in the Gulf of Mexico. As I mentioned, this is the Bermuda High. It often extends well off to the east to the Azores. And, uh, and uh, forecast uh, through the weekend and early next week, this Bermuda High is expected to expand a little bit off to the west. And that's going to cause Laura to pa pass into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And then you have Marco heading into the western Gulf of Mexico. They're going to Fujiwara around each other. You can imagine just two big blobs into a, inside of a general cyclonic circulation spinning around. Uh, the overall cyclonic circulation is going to dictate the movement of the individual storms. And uh, so as Laura begins to move into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, they modulate each other's motion. It'll cause a deflection a little bit further west of Marco, maybe even a stall out off the coast of Texas, in which case it would become a mega rain producer right uh, in southeast Texas and southern Louisiana there. Um, and, that, and as uh, uh, Marco would stall off the, the western Gulf of Mexico, that would allow Laura to lift off to the north. And it's just going to be a mess of these two uh, decaying tropical cyclones over the southern U.S., probably causing extensive rain, tornado warnings, all kinds of chaos. But really, you've got the Fujiwara effect, you've got the Bermuda High, and those are a couple of the steering mechanisms that will dictate you know, the forecast track. And the models are actually in striking agreement uh, today with that further south track, grazing the northern coast of Cuba, and uh, then heading into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And uh, then lifting off to the north around the western side of the Bermuda High, possibly somewhere on the central Gulf Coast, but anywhere from southern Florida through the western coast of Florida, northwestern Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, southern Louisiana, southeast Texas needs to watch this. These hurricane models are available on the tropicaltidbits.com website, incredible website put together by Levi Cohen. And uh, there's the latest recon mission. Uh, there is a recon mission in progress right now are on the way uh, toward uh, Tropical Storm Laura, but this is the one uh, that was sampling Tropical Depression 14. You can see that closed rotation right near the center. And to find the, the closed rotation, you need to look for those southwesterly wind barbs, even westerly wind barbs there on the southwest and south side of the circulation. You've got northeasterlies here on the north, and once it has that closed rotation, that's when it's named a Tropical Depression. The next step and the next uh, the forecast is for this to intensify into Tropical Storm Marco, pass over the northern Yucatan as a stout tropical storm, and then as it re-emerges over the western Gulf of Mexico, it's going to intensify, likely, into a Category 1 hurricane. So that's our breakdown, and I'm about to uh, hit the road here. Uh, first stop is in Atlanta. Um, we're going to be heading east and then at that point I'm going to decide the exact logistics, which one to cover. Do we go after Laura? Do we chase Hurricane Marco? Here's Tropical Depression 14, likely to be named a uh, tropical storm very shortly. Look at all this convection here on the east side in that inflow band. A little a bit of a deformation zone there, convergence band off to the east, a moisture plume. It's crazy you have all this deep convection and then in the center of the uh, tropical cyclone. It's wrapping in a little bit of dry air and you just have this little whirl, but that's where the center is. Not a lot of vorticity in this convection out well to the east of that tropical depression. And then here is uh, Tropical Storm Laura, 45 mile an hour winds. You can see a little bit of a convective burst uh, near the center or just to the east of this storm. And it's uh, moving off to the west northwest. And when it encounters a little bit of westerly shear aloft, it could actually help to more vertically align this tropical cyclone and even help to intensify it uh, more further than uh, uh, the National Hurricane Center track, but it's going to interact with land, mountains over Puerto Rico, mountains over Hispaniola as it takes this track, and Cuba as well. And then once it gets over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the bottom's probably going to drop out of it. 
likely will intensify rapidly. Water temperatures are incredibly warm over the Gulf of Mexico. So thank you for joining me for this live stream. We're going to hit the road. I hope you guys enjoy my weather reports uh, to support our live storm chasing during this intercept. Be sure to check the Facebook supporter community. The link is in the text here of this live stream. And everybody along the Gulf Coast, Florida, be careful. Don't panic. You guys know what to do. Stay tuned uh, to all the information. Heed those evacuation warnings. This is definitely a serious deal, but it's that time of year. We're in the heart of hurricane season, and there's a lot of conditions that are coming together to lead to an active hurricane season. Uh, the MJO or a Kelvin wave that's going over the Atlantic Basin is leading to an uptick in convection, especially over the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, the eastern tropical Pacific. Uh, we also have very warm waters across the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the western uh, tropical Atlantic. And, uh, that's gonna and we also have an emerging La Nina in the tropical Pacific, uh, which tends to uh, reduce uh, upper level wind shear across the Atlantic Basin. So all of those are going to come together to potentially produce a very much above normal tropical season. Uh, we've got these two storms to monitor here with potential U.S. impacts that are coming into the Gulf of Mexico. So stay tuned. I'll be going live as more information comes in. Uh, stay tuned to the Radar Omega app and dominate the storm.